the vlog, the vlog, vloggy, 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 said the vlog, set up just the vlog. Uh, no, it's just, yeah. Hello guys. Hi. Hey. What's, what's up, man? How, How you doing? doing? You look so Welcome. cool. Yeah. I look so cool. Yeah. I'm so nice glad. Nice to meet you. Hey, this is my son, Jaden. Yeah. Have a seat, man. I'll share it with your Yeah, it's cool. This is the station hey, that we put on Rock and Range, right? Yes. I remember it was really chilly that day. It was like, uh, yeah. kind of cold and rainy. Unusual, man. Yeah. yeah. And I'll take my car. Uh, you want something? <laughs> you want anything? Um, Coffee would be great. Yeah, okay, so cool. Have, here we go. Here we go. Is it the bus like out back? Like mm -hmm. you drove it here? Yeah. That's cool. Oh, I didn't tell you that? No. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> I have not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I love the fact there's Tim Hortons here. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah. Canadian yeah. Canadian He's Canadian. a Canadian. Okay, I don't know. Is he Canadian? What? Is Bret Hart Canadian? I mean, come on. I don't know. Is he <laughs> God. Wow. I'm so excited about our son with us, you know, because he's a huge wrestling mark, too. So, <laughs> welcome, great, Chris Jericho. Man. Awesome, thank you. And of course, uh, you're not even in town to uh, to fight. You're in town to play with your awesome band, Fozzy. Yeah, man. Tonight at the uh, Newport Music Hall with Theory of a Dead Man and Fozzy. Which uh, is so sick. I know you're looking around for a Fozzy poster. We need one. No, I'm just looking around to see uh, all the different uh, cool posters you have on the wall. Yeah, it's Very like nice. the 70s, like a real deal radio station. Yeah, exactly. Old school radio. <laughs> no, we're excited, man. We've been on the, the Theory Tour for a week now, and it's been uh, it's a great package. Yeah. It really is. It's um, It's been a lot of fun. We were in... Actually, we had a, uh, they had a day off, so we did a show in Beckley, West Virginia last yeah, night, exactly is. which is great. It's kind of a, in this place that's literally in the middle of nowhere. It's a real deliverance type place. <laughs> um, so uh, it's good to be back in civilization again. It's weird. My, uh, the experience I have with Beckley is my great-grandfather had a heart attack, and that's where we were. Just happened to be in Beckley. Yeah, well, you know, the, the, good thing we're in the booming metropolis of, of Beckley. Of Beckley, yes, <laughs> some, some nice, of you know. the finest surgeons in the world. Oh, <laughs> God. What's easier traveling? Because I know you're on the bus. Apparently, your tour bus is in, out back at our radio station. What's easier on the road with uh, wrestling? Because you're on the bus with that, them as well, right? No, no, you you're, flew? On, you're on your own on that one. You are? Yeah, you keep saying fly. There's no, there's not a lot of flying. No you fly into the first town, and then you drive across the country, and then you fly out the last day. Um, but it's 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 fun. It's better to to travel with the band because you are on the bus, which is cool. Um, you know, and you, you don't have to worry about anything. You just get on the bus if you want to watch a movie, if you want to have a drink, whatever it is. Get in your bunk and you go to sleep and you wake up like I woke up like about ten minutes ago, uh, when your tour manager kind of shakes you awake and here you go. And what, what, what am I doing today? Well, here's your day sheet. You got to do this, this, and that, that, and this, this. Whereas uh, a wrestling, you're more just completely on your own. It's more independent. Uh, you just got to drive by yourself from town to town. You really do. You drive by yourself. yourself. Yeah. Well, I guess in the old days, the guys used to, to carpool and stuff, right? Well, sometimes, yeah. yeah. But, but um, I, I just, if I'm going to be doing that, I like just to kind of go on my own pace and, and do it my own way. Um, so there's more independence when, you, when you're doing the, the wrestling thing. But okay. uh, it's a lot easier and less responsibility when, when you're doing the band thing, which is, is, is really cool. So, and, and plus, you cannot get a better sleep than in a tour bus bunk. The yeah. bunk is great, you just, it's, it's called a rolling coffin. You just get in there, you close the, uh, the curtain, and man, it's super dark, and when the bus is driving, like that's oh, when I can really hum, sleep, like, that hum, yeah, it really like, lulls you to sleep. And it, 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 whenever we get to the, to, the, to the town, to the venue, whatever, it's hard to stay asleep because when the bus stops, it's like you just need that that sound, you know what I mean? But um, you can't, you can't yeah, keep sleeping. Yeah, like, it's like it's like having a stream of yeah. daylight hitting you if you're you know sleeping at your house or whatever. But it's it's um it's actually really relaxing to to to, to uh, be on the bus, which is cool. Well, I gotta tell you, man, I have become a multi fan of yours, not just of uh, from the wrestling world. Obviously, it started there, then it goes to music, but now you're doing what we do. You're you're doing you're doing like a radio show, but it's a podcast. Talk is Jericho. Yeah, I guess it's kind of like a modern day radio show. Well, podcasts right? are clutch, man. You know, like in, he in even my does opinion. one. Yeah, even though I he's... did one with uh, Mark Coleman and Matt Brown. We, it's mostly about you know UFC and, and uh, other combat sports and stuff. But it's 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 an excellent medium, man. Well, it's fun too because uh, I had a radio show for two separate times for a couple of years each on, on XM Radio, and I enjoy the the uh, conversation aspect of it. Yeah. You know, playing music was fun, but I liked having the interviews when I would do them. And it's, it's been a really cool experience. I've been doing it for almost a year now. I think it's been 75, 76 episodes. And you get a chance to, to talk to your friends. Yeah. That, that's the coolest thing, whether it be you know, musicians or wrestlers or actors or, or hockey players or 
you know, ghost hunters, Bigfoot hunters, whatever it is. And, and a lot of those guys aren't my friends. You know, like I had William Shatner on or Ace Fraley or yeah. guys like that that I've never met before. When else are you going to get a chance to talk to Ace Fraley for 45 minutes? That's ridiculous. You know, so it's, it's a really, um, it's a lot of fun as a fan, and it's a lot of fun to talk to your friends. Like I said, you know, I had, I had Triple H on uh, a couple weeks ago, and I've never talked to him for 90 minutes in my life. That's interesting. You know, um, and it's a, like you said, it's, it's a great medium. I mean, I see, you know, Slash Estate put out album on the wall. Yeah. You know, I, it's at the point where I fly to different places to be able to talk to the guys face to face. I'm going to go to get Slash in, in a couple of weeks. Oh, that's awesome. Because, you know, doing it on the phone is cool, but face to face is a whole Clutch. different thing. Yeah. It, it, that's that's one of, one of the, the cool things about being on tour and being on the road. You meet different people. You know, when we did Rock in the Range, I can't remember if that's where I did Rob Zombie and Vinnie Paul, if I did it at Carolina Rebellion. But, you know, you look at the show, who's on the bill? Okay, Zombie's on the bill. I'm going to go over to uh, do a podcast with him. Okay, hell yeah, he's on the bill. I'll go hang out with Danny for a while. But, you know, you look at the show. Who's on the bill? Okay, Zombie's on the bill. I'm going to go over to uh, do a podcast with him. Okay, hell yeah, he's on the bill. I'll go hang out with Danny for a while. So um, it's, 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 been a, it's been a really cool experience, and, and people seem to enjoy it. They like being the fly in the wall yes. yeah, no for, for a, a conversation. Dude, Sunday night was uh, one of the best matches I've ever seen you and Randy Orton. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, it was... Like, literally, like, put on a clinic. Yeah, that was uh, kind of my farewell match um, for for a while. You know, I, I go back to the WWE whenever we're kind of off uh, off the road with Fozzie. We happened to be off the road this summer, and that's why I was able to go back for, for the, the three months that I went. But um, that was it, it was weird because you can't do both at the same time. And we had just started uh, a theory tour for like three or four shows, and then I had one more show with the WWE. So you're like rock guy, and then back to wrestler guy and then the very next night back to rock guy so like it's, what it's, yeah that's it's, it's hard it's hard to people say how do you do it you, you can't do both there's no yeah. way it's too physically demanding mentally demanding um so that was kind of the one last loose end that i had when this tour started and then once it's over it's back on the road for for the next you know, year or whatever it is that it's going to be you just don't um, stop since i had a, a Two dreams when I was a kid. I wanted to be in a rock band and I wanted to be a wrestler. Those are my two goals. Done and done. <laughs> and, you know, everyone thought I, uh, thought I was crazy. You know, never mind one of those things. And when, you know, to get the chance to do both, and, and Fozzie's growing so much over the last year or so, you got to keep hammering it because rock and roll is such a hard business to get into. When you start kind of uh, putting your foot in the door, you got to kick it open. So, you know, getting a chance to do shows like Rock in the Range yeah. it really set the tone for when... Our record came out in July. Do you want to start a war? It debuted at number fifty-four on the Billboard charts, which was our highest debut. And then Lights Go Out was was uh, top thirty uh, at Rock Radio, which was great, highest once again. So there's been a lot of huge advancements in the band. So you just got to keep it rolling. But your guitar player is ridiculous. Yeah, uh, Rich Ward is, is he's, he's kind of one of the most uh, best kept secrets in rock, and he's really not a secret. A lot of guys know who he is. He's like a musician's musician. The Duke. The Duke, yeah, and um, you know when, when, when we do shows, uh, for, you know, like Zach Wild, huge Rich Ward fan, you know, uh, Sinister Gates, huge Rich Ward fan, and it's cool to kind of see Rich getting a little bit of his of his due because he's a great songwriter, great player, great on stage, great guy. So um, it, it's 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 cool to kind of uh, see all of us in the band getting more and more recognition, getting more credibility, and, and opening more doors. Like I said, so when you were growing up. And, and you started to get into music. Like, what was the first record you remember having? The first record I remember having was uh, Beach Boys Summer yeah. Fun. It was uh, you, Brian Wilson. It was dude. like K Tell. You could buy it on a, on an eight track. Yeah, I think an eight track was way a long time ago. I was like maybe five or six. I remember I saved up my money because I saw it on a commercial, a TV commercial. It was like eight bucks or something, and that kind of opened the door to getting to the Stones and the Who. But the Beatles was my my biggest band uh, for years and years and years. And then when I started in junior high. I noticed that all of the girls were wearing Ozzy shirts and Iron Maiden shirts and Priest shirts. And I thought if I'm ever gonna talk to any of these girls, because it wasn't cool to like the Beatles back in like the early to mid eighties, as weird as that is, I thought if I'm ever gonna talk to any of these girls, I better check out some, some heavy metal. So <laughs> the first metal record I bought at a, at a comic book shop for two bucks was Blizzard of Oz. And that's awesome. And then when I listened to that, I realized like a lot of this is Beatle influence, like Goodbye to Romance is yeah. such a Beatles song. And then it's sort of tying in that the Beatles kind of started everything, even heavy metal as well. But then I just became a metal freak, like they used to call me Mr. Metal in high school, because I knew everything <laughs> about metal, everything. And it, that still continues to this day. Now, did you train at the dungeon with Stu Hart? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well not with Stu Hart. It was, I went to the Hart Brothers Pro Wrestling Camp. 
which was in a bowling alley, and there was a heart there was a heart brother there on the first day. And the rest of the eight weeks, there was no heart brother. So now, is this the, before you were a wrestler? Like, you wanted to be in this camp? Or well, that's no? how you, you got to train yeah, to, to be a okay. wrestler. So Obviously, I'm right. dumb at this. No, it, no, no, no I mean, people like, say, how do you start? It's like, you got to train. Okay. You go to school to learn how to do it, you know? The power plant. And yeah. they were doing that in Atlanta. Like, so they, it was kind of like a college for guys that wanted to go to wrestling school, basically. Yeah, now they have NXT in, uh, in Orlando for, for the WWE. When I'm not, you know, uh, working in the WWE, I don't really do much with wrestling. I just don't have a lot of yeah. time, you know what I mean? But uh, it's a great place. It's a great place for, for guys to start learning, and it's definitely better than anything that I had. Yeah. Better than it was a pink bowling alley where if you stood on the top <laughs> rope, you uh, could put your head through the roof. So wow. I've been a couple times. I said, I've never seen an anticipated arrival like that. The countdown clock for Y2J. That's countdown what they clock. keep writing in. I was wondering yeah, what that yeah, is. Yeah. Y2J, so yeah. cool. Y2J, and so it's what a cool dude. Yeah, when that's finally started, debuted. That, it was started, like, Whoa. that started because um, I debuted right before Y2K, mm -hmm. and they could, what's Y2J mean? It was like uh, <laughs> back in back Jericho. in 1999, kids. There was like this, <laughs> Way back in yeah, yeah. There's this evil. Uh, computer virus that was going to destroy the world right. called the Y2K virus. And I was coming into the WWE right at that time, so my last name is Jericho. So I thought, hey, Y2K, Y2J, there you go. <laughs> nice. Um, so that's what that means, because people still, like, a lot of kids would say, what does Y2J mean? I'm like, sit down, Junior. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm, just I'm sure before. our son Jaden had no idea. Yeah, I guess it's better well, than being, like, HBK where you're the heartbreak kid and you're, like, 50. Well, I mean, you got to look at, uh, I would say that, that WWE is show business boot camp. You learn a little That's bit about cool. everything, and for me, I was never, I never just, I never considered myself a wrestler. I'm an entertainer. You know, all the uh, from the moment I started at 19 until now, I've always done other stuff. And a lot of times, that people piss, get pissed off at that. You know, you can't go do other things. You're just a wrestler. It's like, I've never looked at it that way. And I'm, you know, with Fozzie, we've had to work twice as hard to get people's respect sometimes because sure. people think this is going to be some kind of a thing where, you know, we're standing in the middle of, of, of the stage in a ring with tights, singing songs about hitting people with chairs and, and body slams. And it's never been that. It's two yeah. completely separate things, you know. I mean, Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden is an airline pilot. Iron Maiden doesn't sing songs about sitting in C3B and having small bags of peanuts and, and going into a small laboratory. Right. It's it's two completely separate things. And when Bruce Dickinson's flying a plane, I don't want him to hear him sing on the hills. I want him to fly the damn plane <laughs> and land it safely. Just people get angry because people have a little bit of a negative slant sometimes towards you when you go out and do other things. If you're good at it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you just you just gotta hammer away and people sooner or later will go, wow. You know, I've heard so much about this Fozzie band. How good can it be? I'm gonna check it out. And they check it and go, man, this man kicks ass. This is just as good as you know anything else that's on the radio or anything yeah. else that I'm seeing. And that's, you know, it's like Jared Leto from 30 Seconds to Mars. I'm sure he went through all the time. Yeah. And then the guy won an Oscar and sold out the Hollywood Bowl, you know, a, a couple weeks later. So I don't care if people have preconceptions about me or prejudices about me or, or anybody that, that comes from one world to another. It doesn't matter to me, I'm used to it. It's easy to sit here and go, we're talking to Chris Jericho, the legend. When I was 19, everyone th said, you'll never make it in wrestling. You'll never do it. It's a dumb idea. And then, guess what, I did it. Then we go on to Fozzie. You'll never make it in music, it's a dumb idea. Guess what, we went and made it with Fozzie too. So uh, when you have that sort of uh, idea of how to, how, how to build something, you know, we did Adam Carolla's podcast a couple weeks ago. The guy goes, why would anyone ever bet against you? Because you already did yeah. it. I would bet on that guy for doing something and following his weird dream. Now he's doing it again. I'm going to bet on him again. And that's kind of what's been going on. The band has been growing. And, and, and guys who come from wrestling in any aspect, you got to work twice as hard. Once you get that respect, you've got it for life. Our fans are the most loyal fans in the world, Fozzie fans. Are you married? Have kids or anything? Yes, like yes, that? and yes. Yeah, I have three kids. You have three oh, kids. awesome! Man. Yeah, yeah. We have four kids. It's a, it's just wow, a nuts yeah, yeah. environment all the time. Right? How old yeah. are they? Um, Teens or? No, no, no. Young? Eleven, eleven, and, and eight. My oh, daughter's cool. great. Yeah. That's like yeah. So wait, he's do 11. you have a boy? Yeah, he's eleven. Okay, so like, is he interested in wrestling or music? I mean, they'll watch it, you know, yeah, sure. but they're not really diehards. But the, the coolest thing that I ever did for them was uh, Dancing with the Stars. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they really, they really <laughs> love that. When I did that. For whatever reason, that, that stuck Did you me. have fun? I loved it, man. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot did of fun. Did you lose a lot of weight, like they I always did. say? I did. Yeah, it was really hard because you're like training seven hours a day, yeah. you know, uh, seven days a week, ten weeks uh, in a row. And it's funny, too, because it, I, I did it and, and actually started doing pretty good at it because, you know, Choreography of dancing that has a lot to do with wrestling choreography, being light on your feet. But the thing that really got it was being a musician, the syncopation of the beats and staying on top of the beat and behind the beat, 
um, it, it was it was it was really uh, really interesting experience. A lot of fun. Very cool. Yeah, yeah let's uh, put Fozzie in for the next one. Yeah. I think we won the battle of the fucking bands like six days in a row. Yeah, uh, uh, with our night chick, uh, she does uh, choose it or lose it. Yeah. And, yeah, we have like a, uh, a champ that stays, and yeah, <laughs> for sure. Okay, so people are, I tell Chris he needs to guest back on the Talking Dead. I forgot. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. that's like our that was love fun. in the show. Yeah, it was a good show. And then tell Eddie Trump to quit taking credit for getting fans and Rock and Hall of Fame. <laughs> you know who was uh, talking you up? Uh, Jamie Joslin. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Jamie? Uh, he comes in every once in a while. We've, we've mm -hmm. became friendly over the years. Yeah, he's uh, he's a big MMA guy, mm -hmm. so we uh, I, so I'll have him on for that. Can you get it on a YouTube really quick? Yes, sir. How long have you been doing the show here? We've been here uh, almost three years. Three years. Yeah, we moved, they brought us in from uh, West Palm Beach, Florida. So where are you from? I grew up there, and then uh, I've been all over doing radio, yeah. but uh, you know that is. I have to choose. I got to do them both. Um, yeah, so I mean, they're both both awesome. Like, wow, that is yeah, cool, right? Absolutely. Two dreams came true for this yes. young boy. <laughs> so you can do whatever you want. Just 